Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf and weekly download episode number 41, which is my weekly tech and PC gaming news series. Today, I'm going to be playing some Forza Horizon 3 when I give you this news, and I'm going to be sipping on a freshly grounded Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Make sure you guys let me know in the comments section what you're sipping on. Let's get into it. To start off this week, Jay's Two Cents delivered a beast of a computer to none other than the hilarious Terry Crews. For those of you that haven't been following this, Terry Crews announced last year that he's really into PC gaming because of his son, and he actually made some videos and live streamed some gameplay. One of the top tech YouTubers, Jay's Two Cents, made a video about six months ago confirming that he was working on a one-of-a-kind PC build for Terry and that project was finally completed over the weekend. I highly encourage you to go check out this like 30 minute video to see what went into building this sexy AF build and to see Terry's reaction, it was very entertaining. We haven't heard a ton of news about AMD's new baller GPU Vega in the last few weeks oddly enough, but this past week at NAB, AMD was fully showing it off. AMD showed off how Vega could easily handle 8K video processing in Adobe Premiere, which is pretty impressive. The real news though is that we actually got a confirmation that Vega is still set to ship in quarter two of this year, which you know is only a few months away, so all signs are still looking good. I'll be updating you guys on this when I find out more. In more AMD graphics card news, the recent release of the new RX 500 series cards is making people curious to see if they can just upgrade their own 400 series to the 500 series by themselves. For example, we all know that the 580 is the same actual graphics chip as the 480 but with better power management optimization, and higher clock speeds. Some tech experts have been successfully using an RX 580 BIOS flash on their RX 480s and getting some pretty good results. Just be aware that I wouldn't recommend doing this kind of thing unless you really know what you're doing. The differences in the 580 and the 480 is so small that it's not worth ruining your card over. Intel has released a very affordable Optane memory solution this week and although it's still being tested by some reviewers, it actually looks like a nice brand new and unique concept. Optane memory is basically like a caching solution that allows your software to load faster, up to 5.8 times faster according to Intel. It basically increases the speed between your processor and storage, including slow hard disk drives, but right now it's only compatible with Intel's newest KB Lake processors. This might actually be a new concept in future PC builds, but we'll have to wait and see farther testing to see if it's worth it or not. And to wrap up the tech news, Google Home is finally getting multi-user support. The lack of this feature is actually a main reason why I don't have one yet. With the new multi-user support, Google will be smart enough to realize who's talking, up to six total users, and then respond with information that's relative to the user. For example, I could ask Google what my schedule looks like and I'll get it, and then five minutes later, without having to switch users or anything, my wife could ask the same question and get her own schedule. Pretty cool stuff. Stuff, although I really feel like this should have been available in the beginning as it's a pretty big deal. To start off the PC gaming news, Twitch announced this week their new affiliate program which will let streamers make money before they become a Twitch partner. This new system is designed to bridge the pretty difficult gap between starting out on Twitch and getting that subscribe button. There are some requirements though, you'll need to stream at least 500 minutes a month have at least three concurrent viewers, and have at least 50 followers. Being able to get paid with bits, this will hopefully encourage more content creators to stream more and not be discouraged. I'm not into the whole streaming thing just yet, but I do have a weekly PC gaming series called Gaming on a Sunday Morning. If you haven't seen it, I check out a new game every single Sunday morning for you guys, and it's kind of like a live stream style video. It's barely edited, and it's about 20 minutes of me playing a game and going over my experience with the game. These videos go live every Sunday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, and I definitely recommend you guys check those out. Moving on, this is kind of tech, but mostly PC gaming news. HyperX's Pulse Fire FPS gaming mouse is now available on the market. HyperX is usually known for their baller RAM and even more baller gaming headsets, but they announced this year at CES about their new gaming mouse. It's only priced at 50 bucks, which is pretty acceptable, and it's shaped 
pretty closely to Razer's Death Adder. The Pixar 3310 sensor has a DPI range of 400 to 3200 and features six buttons with Omron switches. If enough of you want me to check this out, I definitely will for you guys, just let me know in the comment section down below. Just announced this Wednesday, Activision has confirmed that this year's Call of Duty will be back in time to the World War II era and I couldn't be more excited. I'm a complete sucker for Call of Duty games and I actually told myself that I wouldn't buy one this year if it remained in the super futuristic sci-fi world. I guess I have to pick this one up this year as it's confirmed on PC. Activision also announced that there will be a cooperative Nazi zombies mode which I know will get a ton of people excited. There goes another 60 bucks for me. To briefly touch up on some Overwatch news, which by the way I really need to play more of, game director Jeff Kaplan confirmed that they are currently working on three new maps and they will all hopefully be released in 2017. He also stated that they have another three maps that aren't standard and for competitive matches, so we will only see what that means in the future. And finally to wrap up the PC gaming news, Valve has implemented a new standard that if you want to play ranked matches in Dota 2, you'll have to provide a valid phone number to confirm your identity. This is an effort of creating smurf accounts, which is where an elite player creates a new account to play at the beginner levels and completely wrecks house. Now no, it's not impossible to go get another phone or even use someone else's phone number, but it's at least one legitimate step that you have to take to create a smurf account, so I think this will actually work for the most part. Well that wraps up weekly downloads episode number 41. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section what your favorite tech or PC gaming news was this week or if I missed anything. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel and as always, thank you for watching and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.